Well hello YouTube, it's been a while. So it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and um, it's been a little while since I've done a video and I wanted to break up the hiatus with a bit of a palette cleanser really video. So what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to finish off this project here which is my Wool Applique project. This is Lovebirds by Lisa Bongean and I've already done a part one video for this as to how I actually did the applique and, and did the stitching around it for you. And what I said was at the time, and I know it's over a month now, so apologies if you've been waiting for this one, um, I said I wanted to make this into a cushion. So I'm going to do a lapped zipper on the back of this cushion. Um, and so I thought that I'd bring you along for part two and would have a look at how I do the lap zipper on the back. In order to do my lap zippers, I've actually found a really useful tutorial on YouTube and it's by Make It Coats, C-O-A-T-S. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to link that video down below for you so that you can have a look at the expert, if you like, doing it. Um, but for this video, what I'm going to do is just show you my interpretation of that and how I then use it to make this project. So thank you for bearing with me and I hope you enjoy this. So here I have my piece of fabric, my completed project, and what I need to do first is to cut out the backing fabric for the cushion. Now, we know that this panel here is a rectangle, and this one measures, oh, get the right way, around. So this one actually measures 20 inches by 12 inches. Now, what I've got to remember is, whenever you're doing this, is you, if you just cut out an extra panel the same size, you're then going to have to put your zip in either down the side or on one of the edges or uh, as you go through. And what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to attach this trim here, which is um, a pom-pom trim that matches the colours in my bedroom already. And I want that to go inside the seam like this. So... I don't actually want that to interfere with the zip, so I'm going to make a lap zipper that's going to run acro horizontally across this, this, on the back of this design, um, on the back of this cushion. So what I'm going to do now is I need half of the distance here, because then I'm going to add on my seam allowance on each piece, and that will then give me the, the fa spare fabric to be able to do the lap zipper. So I need the full width, which is 20 inches, and then this one here is 12 inches long. So half of that is six inches, and then I'm going to add on an inch for my seam. So I'm gonna do each piece 20 inches by seven inches for this one. Okay, so I've just cut these. I'll just lay them across so that you can see how I meant. So it's full width of the project. And then if I lay those at the seam allowance, we can see we've got this amount here that then overlaps. That is our bit that's standing up in the middle. That's going to be our seam allowance that we're going to then sew along here and then fold that back. And that's going to be the starting point for our back of our cushion. Now, what I am going to do is I'm just going to um, put some medium weight um, iron on fusible interfacing on the back of this cushion just to give it a little bit more stiffness and I'm also going to go along and just overlock around the edges. Now when I'm overlocking on my edges as well, I don't know if you do the same, rather than go off at each corner I just do a little loop so I take the work through and then I just twist it round and then um, I don't actually cut the threads at that point. I think it saves a little bit of thread, it doesn't make a lot of difference. It's certainly quicker anyway, I think. So I'll be doing that and then I can just snip those off later. It's just to make sure that this main bit doesn't, doesn't fray if it gets washed in the future. Um, it just makes it nice to work with. So I'll just pop off and do that and then I will be back to show you the next stages. So I'm just coming up to a corner. So I'll, I'll take it off to the end of the piece of work but then I'll just spin my work round and carry on without cutting my threads. I'll show you how that works. So I've just gone off the edge of the work with my um, threads and my needles. Spin it round, rotate my work 45 deg 90 degrees. Back under the presser foot again. And then off we go. creates these loops on the end which you can then just snip off. It is it's not a little not a massive difference but it's just a little difference I thought I'd show you. So I've just set up my sewing machine now to be able to do the next bit that we need to do 
and what I'm just going to apologise for in advance is that my thread is very very similar to the colour on my cushion. Now that's deliberate for me because this is a finished project and I know that in a lot of other tutorials people use a contrast thread but I, I want to just get this project done so I hope you'll bear with me and hopefully I'll be able to point it out to you where I have sewn and how I've sewn it so that you can follow along um, but just for the interests of, of being open and honest I am going to be using a, a, a really well coordinating thread for sewing this project. Okay so I've matched up the two ends together so the pieces are, are equal, the right sides together and what I'm going to do now is, using a straight stitch, I'm going to sew a little bit into the start here, and that'll just give us a bit to make it nice and even on the seam allowance. And the marker for my one inch point is about just here. So when I line my fabric up with that point there, I have got a walking foot on, but that's just coincidental. Um, you can use it with an ordinary foot, but a walking foot would always make any kind of home upholstery project a little bit easier to, to manage and to work with. So, let's get started. So at this point here, I'm going to use my needle up down button so that my needle will always finish in the work. And this little bit here has been sewn, it's about a couple of inches, has been sewn using a 2.2 um, stitch length. What I'm going to do now is just use my machine to just change my stitch length up to the maximum, which on mine is five, because I want to tack along this line now, because this will be opened up in the future. But rather than do it by hand, it's quicker to do it on my machine for this project. So I've just put my machine stitch length up to five, so that will give us a nice big stitch that will make it easy for undoing later on. So I'm just going to go along to the bottom here until I'm about a couple of inches away from the edge, and then I'm going to switch back down to my 2.2 width like stitch length and I'm also going to stop in and start in at both ends of those little bits and that will then um, give us the centre bit so I'll, let's just carry on and do that I'm going to stop about here I'm going to take my stitch length back down to 2.2 I'm going to stitch a little bit further forward return it back and then stitch off to the end But again, reverse stitch just at the end here, because that, that finishing point is, is important. So take my needle up, snip my threads at both ends, and then what we have there, if I just move the machine to one side, is, and hopefully you can see this here, is we have the smaller stitches for this couple of inches, then where I've started and stopped, and then here we've gone on to the bigger stitches, and then what this means is that now when we open this up here, I'm just finger press this open for now. You can open this up because this needs to be pressed open like this. When we get our main project piece and lay it over the top, that will be, as near as done it, the same size. So that's what we hope to have and that's worked well. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment then. So what I'm going to do now is just pop to the ironing board and press this seam open. Because this is a linen fabric and it's been interfaced, then it, it will keep it quite, um, it will take the, the press very nicely. So I'll pop back when we've done that. So I've just got my zip out. I'm going to use one that's coordinating to my project, as you can see. And this one is a general purpose zip. So it has this square zipper tag on it and the teeth are shown on the top like this so when this opens up it's just a normal zip that you would just just find just to explain though that sometimes you get things called an invisible zip and this one here is an invisible zip and the main difference you can tell the way that I can tell straight away is just looking at the zipper pull on this darker one and hopefully it's showing up on camera you can see the different zipper pulls so this one looks a little bit fancier in my opinion and it's a little bit decorative. So you get an invisible zip on the back of a dress where you've got two seams joining together but you don't want to see the zipper teeth. So on this one here, the coils are actually on the underside of the zip and then as the, when you stitch, the, the um, coils are slightly, you stitch it to your work that way but, but it, it just puts the seam up together and that's where it gets its name from, from being an invisible zipper. So the invisible one is not the one we want today, that is more for using for a 
uh, for a dressmaking project or if you wanted to put a zip in a seam you, you can try that they're really fiddly to do though on on some things especially with piping when I've tried to do that um, it didn't work very well but it, it, it can be done um, so the one that I'm going to use this time is the standard zip that's got the coils on the top of the, on the top on the same side as the zipper pull and that's the one that we're going to use. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, working with our zip here, we're actually going to put that down, so teeth down, onto our project. Now what I am going to do is if you pull your stitches apart on your seam, you can see where we've got the, the smaller, tighter stitches here. And then you can see where that then stops and it becomes the bigger stitches. So what I'm going to do is, which is with my little Fritzie on pan, just to help me, is I'm just going to put a little little mark here and here just so I can see. And then again on the bottom here, just a little mark. So I'm just pulling my seam apart. I can see that it stops round about here. So let's just change that over just there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is line up the zip. We're going to leave the zip of pull facing upwards and we're going to line up the start of the zip with the start of our stitches there so the little mark that we put with our Frixion pen to say we're starting so that's nice we're going to line the teeth up so they're just the top edge of the the teeth is just butting up towards the seam allowance there to, to the stitch line not the seam allowance gosh my words aren't right you can tell I've not done this for a while Okay, and we're just going to pin this. Now, when we pin this, we are just pinning it through the seam allowance only. We are not pinning it through both sides. So if you can see, I can lift up my seam allowance here. Okay, so what we're going to do here is just pin this along here to the seam allowance, making sure that we have got our seam allowance straight and our teeth lined up with the zip. So we know we're going to stop there, so I'm going to put a little pin across the bottom here because we don't need to go past that bit there. So that could be my stop point. And then another one just here, just to take us up to that point there. So as you can see, if I just hold my tape back, then all the way along we've got that seam nice and even. And it's just to the seam allowance, okay? So now we're going to take this, put our two sides together and we're just going to sew along the seam allowance here at a consistent distance. Open this up a little way first to get us started, Make sure, making sure that's pretty straight. I'm going to line up my the edge of my presser foot here with the edge of the tape of my zips. That's going to be my reference line to try and get a straight line and keep it consistent all the way through. I'm on a 2.2 stitch length. I'm just going to start and start. I'm just keeping that other bit of tape out of the way. Stitch down far enough. And then I'm going to use my needle down button. It's one with a little arrow up and a little arrow down. If I press that, then every time I stop, my needle will be pushed into my work and will anchor it down. It's a really useful option on your machine. If you've not got that, just hand crank your needle so it's down into your work. I like to go right to the bottom of the stitch so you know it's nice and deep. You can then lift up your presser foot. You can then move your work around without actually losing that place. You're not going to get a, a zigzag in your work if you try and do that. So now all I'm going to do is just do up this zipper tape now to get that out of the way because we've gone past it far enough. Put my foot down and then I'm going to carry on stitching to the end of my zip. Just guide your work through. Just keep your eye on this edge here. You don't need to watch the needle. Just keep your eye on this edge here. And as long as that's right, then your work will stay straight. I'm going to stop and reverse sew just at this point here. So I can take this out for now, a little bit of a bent needle, okay. and then reverse, and that will do. Take the needle up and I'll work out. And there we can see we have got the zip sewn just onto the seam allowance. That's all we've got, okay? Next thing we're going to do now is we are going to fold the zip back and the seam allowance so that that folds under. 
and that gives us a really nice straight edge just here and we can just finger press that with our fingers make sure we've got a nice consistent line going all the way down and just finger press that because the next thing we're going to do is we are now going to top stitch on this little bit here of fabric here put it a bit closer for you so all I've done that was where I was finished with my zip I've then just folded the seam allowance and the zip underneath itself and that then gives us this nice little lip of fabric that we're now going to just top stitch down along the edge there okay so all of these are folded out of the way I'm going to start at this point here where I've marked and I'm going to sew all the way along to the other mark at the other end so let's do that now and for this I'm going to now well, I'm a big fan of matching up on your presser foot where you're stitching so I'm going to use the inside edge of here of this foot here along this seam line here and that'll give me a nice consistent edge so start it off reverse a few stitches and then you can just come straight on you can lengthen your stitch length if you wish i've kept mine at 2.2 so hopefully we should be able to go straight past the zipper pull or just alongside it anyway just make sure it doesn't flick under your needle because it will break it there we go take our work out. So now where we were we're just going to fold this over the zip now it should just sit quite nicely because you've got that seam allowed that um, sewing line that you that you, we um, originally did the tacking line. We're just going to fold that back over our work like this and then what we're going to do now is we're going to keep a note of where we start and stop which is going to be here and then again at the other end just here And then I've seen different options for long here. You can either do a little line or you can use, I mean, I'm going to think I'm going to use the edge of my presser foot again just to, you, we need to be the other side of those teeth. So we need to feel that line there. So let's have a look and see with my seam gauge how much space I'm probably going to leave. Don't want to use a whole inch. Probably, no, half an inch isn't quite enough. Three quarters might be too much. Okay, so we're in between half and three quarters of an inch, and that's going to give me a line. Again, I'm going to just do a little drawn line because I'll be able to just keep that straight pretty much between my stitching. I'm just marking that a little bit of a guideline all the way along, so to give me some idea. And you can estimate it as much wherever you want it to be. The other thing I've seen people do is put some painter's tape or some masking tape and that's actually what they do in the example on the tutorial. Um, I've never done that, but I think it should be quite good. But that I can feel underneath that that line there is going to be through the seam allowance and through my through my zipper tape because I can feel where my, where my teeth are going to be. I might even just come and just a smidge in from there, but it'll give me a guide anyway to make sure it's straight. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start here and then just sew up here, only from the seam line up around where this pin is because that's going to just finish off that tape for me. And then at the other side, I'm just going to make sure that I'm just catching those tapes down nice and neatly at the other end as well. Okay, so before I start and stitch this, I'm just going to move my foot over. So I've just undone the twist at the back. And I'm just offering it up my needle up to it, make sure that's okay. It's not going to hit it when I start sewing. And what I'm going to do is I am going to now sew, I put my pin out, didn't I? So there, here. So I'm going to start here, right on this the seam line that's that's there. Hold on to my thread so I don't get a nest at the back of my work. So let's just start going. And reverse a few stitches now this is a nylon zip so don't try and do this if you've got a metal zip so sew up towards where you want that you want to be needle is down yep, I'm going to miss those teeth right okay so I'm going to line up the middle of this foot here with the center of those of that stitching line so let's get going 
So I'm now getting up to where the zipper pull is. And so I'm going to just keep an eye on where my zip is for here. And what I can do is, no, I can't move it there. So I'm going to have to just be careful. So I should be able to just get past it without any too many problems, hopefully. Yeah, the fabric will give a little bit. So let's just keep trying to get that, keep that nice and straight. So we just passed, leave my needle in the work, lift my foot up, I can then pivot and I'm past it. So now I'm just going to sew directly to the now until we get to the edge of the work and then just back again to reinforce it. Okay, needle up. Let's get my threads just there. And just here, that's caught the zipper tape back nicely on the back there. And where we started as well. Take that out. Okay. So in essence, we've done now the actual difficult bit, which is the actual lipped, zipped lap zipper itself. What we need to do now is just find our way through here. If you use the little point of your quick and pick, you'll be able to just find out where you've got one of those little stitches, just like that. And then we're just going to cut through that stitch there. As it starts to open up, we can then run our quick and pick through and we can see our zip being reamed being revealed to us. Pen marks I made with the Frixion pen so they'll just iron off when we just take it over to the iron just to set it all. You can see how much thicker this linen is now that it's been interfaced as well which just makes for a nice sturdy quality feel to the cushion. It might seem a little bit tedious but after all your hard work it's just a small price to pay to get this these tacking stitches out. And you're looking for where you've marked your, your line where your stitching is and that's where you want to take it up to. And there we go, actually. If you can see that, that's the top of our pillow. And that's the lip zip. And there's the very neat zip in underneath. And that works very nicely. So again, you can see it's completely covered. The stitches are completely covered. And really nice and neat. That's why I say it's such a fabulous tutorial. Not mine, the one on Make It Coats, which I've linked below, so you'll be able to follow that. So the next stage that I'm going to do now is going to get my pom-pom trim together and we're going to pin it to the outside of the cushion so that we can start and do, finish this cushion off. So I'll do that next. Just before I do actually put the trim on, what I'm going to do is I've snipped off the end of my um, zip. I've taken it beyond where we've gone across the zip there so we, don't, we know we don't need to worry about that anymore now that's not going to pull the zipper across and then just these loose edges here I'm just going to put a couple of stitches across here just one run on that side and also here and it, you can see there's just a slight step in the stitches so we're going to I'm just going to keep keep that in place and then just stitch across because then when I'm sewing my seams later it'll just make sure nothing flicks over and, and makes it look un untidy so I'll just do that but it's just a quick step that I thought I'd best show you before I start putting the trim on Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to sew this so that when we turn it the right side out, really all you see is the pom-poms. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to fold that up slightly like that so it just gives us a starting point. And then with my pins, just somewhere on this bottom edge, I'm just going to start and pin this in place. I think I'm going to pin it at right angles because I think that'll make it easier when we're trying to tack things on. So we've got the, the pom-poms facing towards our work and towards the centre of the cushion. And then every so often, I'm just going to just put a pin in to hold the trim in place. And we'll see what we do when we come to the corners. So let's have a pin just before the corner. And then we're going to do a right angle. A bit like mitering the corner on a quilt, really. Whichever you've done that, because you want them to be stick out. So, just put in a right angle fold in the corner of there. So that bend should have that one sticking out and that one sticking out. I think that will work for me. And for that, I'm not going to use a pen. 
again another Tupperware not a Tupperware tub another takeaway tub well actually this one's from Hummus I think actually which is really a really nice size so I'm going to use some binding clips and maybe I replace my pins with binding clips that probably would mean less potential for blood on my project from stabbing myself with my pins so I'm just going to do that again so again I'm going to do a fold so I go up to the top of the edge of the work I then go into twist it round sort of holding it in place there so I create a little kink if you like in the work and when we sew we're going to sew up to here and then we're going to sew down the other side so hopefully they should all the um pom-pom should all stick out the right way I don't think there's any need to cut it off and then create yourself a, another raw edge And I'm going to come, so just make sure your tape isn't twisted at all. Get it in a nice, even place. I think what I'm going to do is I'm, so let's just go past that a little bit. I am then going to take off this lost pom-pom so it gives me some room to look at where we're working. And I want to fold this up so that it doesn't fray. There we go. And then just clip that one back up as well and then that'll hold it in place. Right, okay. So what I'm going to do now is because of um, we're going to be putting all these layers together, as you can see, we've just gone all the way around the outside. I really quite like how that's looking actually. Um, is I'm going to just run a row of um, put my stitch length up to number five and stitch well up sort of in the centre of, of this um, tape between here and here. And I'm just going to run around and just put a quick stitch along because that will actually just hold it all together. So that then when I want to do the next um, bit, which is to put the other side over the top of these it'll just hold it in place just that little bit more securely say this will just hold it in place for you I guess it's an extra step but it, you've just got to be smart about these things sometimes some some steps will save you time as we all know unpicking time is um, a bit tedious start and stop reverse because it'll hold it enough just for those few minutes okay so this is what we've got at the moment we've got our trim just tacked on with that large stitch for now then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our zipper and we want the, the the top of the overlap of the zipper to be facing downwards so I'm going to make sure that that's towards the right side here and then I'm going to match it up probably in the corners first and then using clips again, just match this up along the edge. Okay, the other thing that we need to do as well, before I forget, is to open the zipper up as well at least halfway. Because once we've sewn this all round together, we'll have no way to turn it round. So just un undo your zipper at this point as well, halfway. Using these clips. Uh, join just there so we need to be especially careful as we're, we're just jumping over that with our machine so I'm not going to start where the join is because that's too thick for the over and going backwards and forwards so let's start here we're wanting to sew in about 
half an inch from our needle. Okay. So I'm to line it up with that. So we, we can feel where the where the bumps of the um pom poms are. And I want to just take that through. If we if we find that in some areas we've not quite covered it, we can always go round again um, or just over those problem areas and just take a little bit more of our seam allowance. Let's have a look at that. Sorry about the messing inside of my cushion, but that's what that's what it looks like. So let's just start with this. Stitch length down to 2.2 again. Taking our clips out as we work. Making sure we push those chins from pommes inside. Don't want to catch those in our seam allowance. See how this foot here just allows you to get right up close to your your trim, which is why it's so good for when it's working on piping. And we're aiming to try and ease all this in together so that we have no puppies at the place where we start and stop. So there is a little bit of drag caused by the trim underneath, but hopefully we're going to be able to just pull that so that it's straight. Ooh, now just lift my foot up, smooth that underneath and hopefully we'll be okay. So let's just go backwards and forwards on there. Let's just start and look. Okay. So not my neatest of sewing. Never is on camera is it anyway. And we can see that in some places the seam allowance has gone a little bit skew. Let's turn it round and have a look. Because we've already neaten the edges we can just turn this round the other way. There's a little pom pom that's got caught in, but just ease that out. And again on these corners once we're happy with it all we can then trim those back just to reduce the bulk in the corners anyway. Well that one's a nice corner. It'd be nice if they were all like that. So here we go. Let's have a look and see how we're doing. So so here you can see that's exactly how I wanted it to be. Just the pom poms and the little ropes just sticking out the outside. Here we can still see a little bit of the tape. So now that we've got an angle point, I can now go in and just redo this bit. So this bit is from this corner here, and I'll reduce the bulk that'll help there. So from this corner down to about there. So if I put my hand inside and hold there, just put a clip to let me know. Turn this the other way around. So I'm just going to sew again, just a little bit further in on my seam on that point there. And I'm going to do it bit by bit because then I don't have to do it all in one go. We can just correct bits as we go along. And again, sometimes these things happen. And once it's once it's finished. Somebody take turns it inside out to inspect my seams. Then they shouldn't be able to tell that anything has gone amiss. Okay, that's to there. See if that's correct to that bit. Okay. 
yep so sometimes as I've said to before in other videos it's not always about getting it perfect the first time round it's about knowing how to change it so that you're happy with it that one needs a little bit more Let's turn it back around this way So just make sure that you like you, you start and stop within the, the same stitching line otherwise you will get a step in your work so yep that's got sort of that bit in and here we are with our finished cushion so we've got our lovely trim all the way along the edge here we've got our design on the front and then if we turn it over, the piece to la resistance, which shouldn't steal the show really, but is going to today for me. And that is a very, very nice and neat lip, lip zapper, <laughs> lap zipper on the back. So I'll take a picture of this in situ where it's going to sit. So thank you for joining me today. I've really enjoyed finishing off this cushion. And I hope that you've enjoyed being part of the journey and that you've learned something new. A nice lip zapper. Oh, is that the lap zipper on the back here for our project so I'm going to take a picture of this now um, where it's going to sit and I'll post that on the end of the video for you and thank you so much for your for, for coming back to having a look um, and understanding that we're all human and that sewing should be enjoyable and I've really enjoyed making this project today with you all so um, let's um, enjoy our sewing uh, make what we can for ourselves let's use what we've got um, and let's have some fun along the way. So have a great day, everybody.